Here at Pollock, we create fabrics from the ground up. We are weavers. We have an intimate relationship with fibers, yarns, and woven construction. But we wanted to push ourselves in new directions. We wanted to be challenged by methods and materials outside of our own field and to interact with an entirely different language of making. So we began a project to create a collection of fabrics in collaboration with other makers that use different mediums. A glass blower, a ceramicist, a jeweler who works with metal, a furniture maker who's a master at working with wood, and a fashion designer who specializes in knitting. So it was the Pollock Studio's job to get to the core of what they wanted without requiring them to become textile designers. We didn't want them to just push the repeat button on the computer. We wanted to help them really express their unique perspective on making, but through our medium. We worked with Klaus Bergel, a jeweler in New York and Massachusetts. He works with various metals to create brooches, rings, and objects that are sculptures in miniature. Each metal has a certain meaning embedded in it already, you know, like if you do that in silver or if I do it in gold or if I do it in copper or steel, the material will also inform the piece. I look at jewelry as a, a small model for something that I might do in a larger scale. So I had to create this area here to connect the two, so then that circle comes down here. So this area was all me pretending to be you. <laughs> you were really involved in the choosing the weaves because you wanted something that was real textural here right, that right. kind of simulates the roughness of right. the brooches. Here we have the stitches kind of directionally following the curve, which makes it even more three-dimensional depending on how the light hits it. It's got a lot of life and movement. It's not a quiet fabric. It is very exciting to, to see this coming together now and turning out so beautiful, actually. We also worked with Nathan Craven from Roswell, New Mexico, who creates ceramic artworks. His work is based on ceramics as building materials. He creates his own version of bricks, but very wacky bricks. He extrudes his shapes from molds that he creates. Nathan then cuts them into smaller pieces, which he uses as building blocks for floors and walls that make up his installations. I fell in love with the shapes that he uses and the multitude of colors. So based on this, we did a flat woven jacquard. You can see them all these crazy variations. They're like alien creatures or underwater coral or demons or things that have yet to be discovered. So we started drawing and redrawing some of the shapes and piecing them together, just forming negative space and positive space. We wanted to get as much color variation into this pattern as possible. And with this fabric, it's so fun and happy that we decided to do all fun, happy, exciting, bold colors. We also worked with Matthias Pliesnig, a furniture maker in Rhode Island. Now Matthias uses steam bending techniques drawn from boat building to transform strips of wood into sinuous and kinetic forms. I built this piece in 2006, shortly after building a boat. And I always loved boats and I was starting to get very bored with woodworking. I knew all the rules and I felt like I, I tried to break rules and it, it wasn't going anywhere. So I built a boat and it had a translucent skin on it. And so when I had the boat in the water, I could see the water split in the front of the boat and then come back together in the back of the boat. I modeled the piece that was basically a split, a form that was essentially a wall that was being split around an obstacle and then coming back together again on the other side. I made a little model of the bench and then I started making the actual piece. So when I learned how to steam bend, it completely liberated the world of woodworking for me. Steam bending wood is like drawing lines in space. A very, very natural, natural process. Are you trying to break it? No. <laughs> so you can, get a, you can get a pretty tight, you know, that's a pretty tight loop right there. Wow. And you can keep on bending it. And so, so yeah, so you have about 30 seconds of like ideal, ideal bending where you can, get, you can get tight bends. This fabric is completely based on your first piece that you were explaining about the 
the water going in front of the boat and then coming in the back. Mm -hmm. And it's also based on the fact that there are so many different geometries happening within your pieces. There are the ribs, there is the swoop, and then there's the compound curves. And then there's the shadows that are created by all of these lines coming together. Here's the artwork that was sent to the mill with all the instructions. And Whoa. this is the fabric. So you've got actually two colors. You've got this kind of sagey green, and that's creating the halo shadow. And then you've got the tip of the line that's a different yarn here, just giving it that highlight. Every direction you turn with the light, too, it's like the different, yeah. different, different layers take over. Yeah. Right? Like the, the, very, the back kind of green takes over at a certain point, and then it turns and the ribs take over. Then it's the OG. The design team also collaborated with Catherine Gray, a glass artist in LA. Catherine creates objects and installations made from hand-blown glass. Her mastery of an ancient craft clearly resonated with the work we do, and we were impressed with the wide range of her work from fine art to functional objects. The way that she started to develop her ideas was she blew glass, and this was one of the vases that she made with this project in mind. What she really loved about this piece is that you can see the motifs on the front here and then you can see the motifs through it on the back. So the concept that we brainstormed about was simulating motifs on the front and the back and the overlap of color. So this was her attempt of creating a pattern to kind of communicate to us the general look she wanted to achieve and then us knowing the type of weave constructions that could be used for something like that, we then had to adapt the pattern and adjust it in a way that would make sense for the quality. And it's really gorgeous when it drapes and you just get layers upon layers. And it just creates kind of a beautiful, like soft rain type pattern. Because of the sheerness, we felt like it really kind of simulated the mood of this piece. We worked with Liz Collins, a designer in Brooklyn who machine knits clothing and installations out of yarn and fabric. Her work often has an inherent chaos or disorder, yet at its core it is tightly structured and technically rigorous. As a designer, I really am excited by clothing and making pieces that are special that people can have for their entire lives. I'm really interested in texture and extreme contrast of materials. I seem to be preoccupied with threads hanging, lines moving around, the weight that fabric sometimes holds and it pulls down and creates tension. A little patch of fabric. This graphic to me has been a really powerful thing. This and other graphics like that zigzags, really simple geometry with hard lines and an optical experience that creates vibration. It's very much a consuming kind of visual language for me that I think about all the time and I want to see it in all these different iterations. I think it's very appropriate for interiors and space. The actual woven fabric, which is the final fabric, is completely based on the artwork that you did here. Sometimes if you over-construct an interesting material, you don't get to really see it. So here we get it like you have it trapped wrapped. and stable, but then it gets to like come alive. And this is a raffia yarn, so when you move it, it has a sound to it. how designers choose to use it and go forward with it. Oh yeah, that's like the, the fourth element of collaboration. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's really now in their hands to do something really cool and special. The Maker's Collection is a collaboration that spanned two years, and it produced a group of fabulous fabrics. But more importantly, it pushed us creatively and opened our eyes to new ways of thinking about design.